The ruins alone were impressive enough, but I never dreamed such a treasure lay hidden in the depths of the bounty. It may have been helpful to know this device existed, Your Excellency. My apologies. The gate was a secret I shared with none but my closest advisors. I feared for what might happen should those with ill intentions learn of its existence. What is it you're doing now? There is something I wish to verify. The Noah reports claim that a short stint into the void carries little risk of etheric imbalance. Should one suffer an injury, however, or if one's expedition drags on longer than intended, that risk becomes significantly greater. Graha theorized that a warding scale would confer protection from the Void's corrupting influence, but I would prefer to test that hypothesis before we set foot in the Thirteenth ourselves. So, this is an experiment of sorts? Yes, an experiment. Tell me, how would you go about testing the efficacy of the warding scale? Very good. I see you've been paying attention. As Vritra sent his simulacrum, so too shall we rely on a familiar to bear the brunt of any unpleasant consequences. Now, a lowly imp can navigate a fissure, no matter how narrow. Which means an arcane entity of similar stature should be able to manage the same. I hadn't wanted it to come to this, but no other familiars will do, I'm afraid. I mislike the sound of that. What manner of fiend does she mean to summon? From ocean rise and cloud bank form. From mountain spring and rainfall storm. From river flow and life be born. Water, water, froth and foam! Ready your arms. I fear she's been possessed. Oh, come now. That was adorable. Water, water, fresh and foul. Time to play. Though not my first choice, these familiars I conceived of as a child have the best chance of fitting through the gate. I only wish my younger self had considered a more dignified ending to the creation ritual. In any case, these two should serve as well. This one will bear a warding scale. And when they return from the 13th, we can observe how the talisman, or absence thereof, has affected the progress of the Void's corruption. If I could impose upon you to open the gate, Your Excellency? Ah, yes, of course.
We should also be wary of void scent slipping through while we conduct our experiment. Estinian, you are to keep Nidana safe from harm. As you say. You had best be on your guard as well. Oh, are you volunteering to join the Nixies? I could shrink you down, you know. Let us begin, shall we? Nixies, into the void. I think we've waited long enough. Nixies, return to my side! Thank you, little one. You did well. Oh, the poor thing. Its essence has been irrevocably warped. I must reseal the void gate. That was a sharp lesson in the dangers of void gates. And what of our experiment? I'd say the results speak for themselves. The unprotected Nixie has suffered extensive etheric corruption. As Nidana observed, it's one on its way to becoming a void scent. 
The one merged with the talisman, however, appears unaffected. I sense no changes to its equilibrium. Rest now, little ones. Graha's theory was correct, then. So it would seem that while our second familiar was untouched by void energies, the talisman itself shows signs of degradation. It was, of course, originally designed to shield the soul from primal tempering. It stands to reason that etheric corruption of a different sort would affect it differently. We may need to modify the warding scale's design to account for the 13th's uniquely unstable ether. You've said much of the Void's instability, but my imagination fails me. What manner of place is this broken world? Ah, my apologies. I forget that not all of us spend our days sequestered in dusty archives. The 13th is a reflection of the source that was drowned in a flood of darkness. In Emmett Selk's own words, this tragedy was a result of the Asians' attempts to force a rejoining. They erred in their haste, and made of that world a useless void. You remember Una Kalhai, the unusual child we met during our troubles with the Warring Triad. He explained the fate of the Thirteenth thus. The champions of that ill-fated world use the stone known as Aurasite to contain the power of primals. But those self-same heroes were gradually corrupted by the Aurasite's bleeding energies, transforming into fiends with an endless hunger for ether. By the time anyone thought to oppose them, Light's strength had grown too feeble, and the balance of the Thirteenth tipped into eternal darkness. It was Elidibus, as I recall, who rescued Unakalhai's spirit from his final battlefield. But I wonder if there were others whom the Emissary saved from oblivion. Silpha? The adventurer who traveled with the Warriors of Light? And you say she was another of Elidibus's pawns? I see. So Ciela, or rather Silver, was beguiled by the same dreams of heroism as Unicalhai. And what of your own experience? Will you tell us of what you observed during Noah's expedition? I can picture it now. The sunless, Stygian expanse, infested with legions of ether-starved monstrosities. A void in every sense of the word. What you have described in such lurid detail is exactly why I hesitate to encourage you. Worry not, Great Vritra. Our journey into the Thirteenth is but the first leg of a longer voyage. A voyage that shall lead us to other reflections, to new mysteries and discoveries. And I mean to be there every step of the way. But first I must focus on refining the warding talisman. Then I can begin work on constructing an artificial Atomos. Or I could, if I had the relevant manuals to hand. Might I be so bold as to request access to the Sartrap's family archives? <clears throat> Your Excellency? Hmm? Oh! Yes, that can be arranged. 
I will speak to my officials upon our return. We will see you back in the city then. 